oh, I'm going to the gym five, six days a week. You don't even need to go that many times anyway. <laughs> blasting me on one side what's up guys welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new here today i'm providing you guys some fitness tips this can be for anybody who is starting their weight loss journey or anyone who is currently on their weight loss journey if you've been on my channel you've seen my story i've shared it in multiple videos you can go back and check that out but just to give you like a little brief history on me i have been in the fitness industry for 10 plus years. I'm a former collegiate athlete. I did CrossFit after college. I did bodybuilding. Every style of training there is, I feel like I've pretty much done it. Every style of dieting there is, I have done it. I have gone through major transformations over the years. I have been fit majority of my life. And then I've gained weight, lost weight, gained weight, lost weight. I, I was one of those yo-yo dieters. Then when I feel like I had a good handle on my body, got off birth control, then started gaining a crazy amount of weight in a very short period of time. I couldn't figure out what was wrong. That's when I was diagnosed with PCOS. Everything I knew about my body, I had to scrap it and pretty much start over. Tips I'm gonna provide for you today is great for my PCOS girlies and for anybody else. I am currently on my last and final fat loss journey, cutting calories for the past three plus months. I'm just working on slowly getting the weight off while still living my life, enjoying the things that I like to enjoy. I drink, I eat out, I like fast food, I like all those other things. But I've been able to consistently lose weight. I feel like I have a good grasp on my body and what it needs. I'm gonna share some tips that I've been following and hopefully it works for you guys. Tip number one, when you are starting a fitness journey, whether that's weight loss, weight gain, whatever it is that you are starting, and you really, really wanna take it seriously, you have to set your boundaries up front. Especially come to somebody who's in a relationship. If you're in a relationship, you know what I'm talking about. Especially if your partner is not dieting too, it makes it that much harder. And that's the same for your friends, your family, especially if you come from a family who, who has like family dinners and stuff all the time, or friends who like to go out all the time, brunch, drinks, whatever. You have to set your boundaries up front. Tehran, he is known for feeding me. He loves to feed me. He is the one who goes out and gets food. He's the one that pops up like, oh, I got you this, which is great. Great, I love it, but it's not great when I am currently on my journey. You can't be throwing me off my game. So when I am like serious, like, hey, I'm in this, I let him know, like, listen, no matter what, no matter what I say, don't pick me up food. Same thing with friends, like, hey, maybe for the next couple weeks, I. Don't invite me, <laughs> I don't wanna go out. Um, or you're having dinner with family and people are trying to like give you things like, oh, it's just one bite, oh, it's just one drink. That stuff does add up. And as I did mention, I am someone who does still enjoy themselves. I, you know, just went out recently for a friend's birthday, but this is not something I do regularly. But you still have to set those boundaries and know your limits. Especially if this is something you're really trying to achieve, you gotta say no. All right, tip number two. We all know the most important part of any fitness journey, whether you're trying to put on size or lose weight, is your diet. We know it is your diet. Now, counting calories is not for everyone, but if you are someone who's been doing this for a long time and you still aren't seeing changes, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to start counting calories. If you can't eat intuitively, or you can't control your portion size, then you gotta count calories, at least for a little bit. Not saying that you have to track every single day. I do it once a week. Now, I see this so much online. In order to lose weight, it's all about calories in, calories out. And then I'll go to the comments and I'll see women with PCOS, insulin resistance, like I have. Oh, well that's not the same if you have PCOS. That's not the same, you know, if you have insulin resistance. Just tell you something. <laughs> or you, I see what man's like, I've been eating a thousand calories a day, I'm eating 1200 calories a day, and I'm still not seeing changes. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. At least not consistently. I have PCOS, I have insulin resistance, I gain 20 plus pounds in a month. Like, I know what that feels like, and I promise you, you are not eating as low as of calories as you think you are. Or if you are, maybe you're eating 12, 13, 1400 calories for a few days and then you're binging. Fat does not come out of thin air. It's not coming out of thin air. And unless you be real with yourself and honest with yourself, 
you're never gonna see changes. Us PCOS girlies, we do have it harder than everybody else. Like the way I think about food 24 seven, the way I can eat and then be hungry all over again, the way I crave carbs and sugar, um, the food noise that's constantly there, like the fatigue. We, we just have so many other things that does make this process more difficult. But until you change your diet or until you pay attention to how many calories you're consuming, um, you're not gonna see changes. I say count the calories and then count your protein. You don't need to worry about fast, you don't need to worry about carbs. I mean, if you wanna eat a little bit lower carbs, you can, but the most important part is counting the amount of calories you're consuming as a whole and the amount of protein you're intaking. Because while we're on this journey to lose this weight, we wanna hold on to as much muscle mass as possible. And because we're on a diet and calorie deficit, we wanna feel fuller longer since we're eating less. That means more protein. More protein is gonna make you feel fuller longer. You wanna go to the TDEE website. That's where you can find your calorie intake. Oh, I'll, I'll put it down below if you wanna go check out how many calories you should be consuming. Um, and then when it comes to protein, I say multiply the your goal body weight by 0.8. If I want to be 160 pounds, I'm gonna take 160 times 0.8. So if I can at least get 128 grams of protein in, Phenomenal. Now, if you're somebody who's only been eating like 50 grams of protein per day, don't go from 50 to 130. We want longevity, right? So if you've only been consuming 50 grams of protein, add like 10 more. And then once you get consistent eating 60 grams of protein, then the following week, up it a little bit more, having 70 grams for that week. So count the calories. Next up, we're gonna get into like the workout portion. Steps, get your steps in. Walk, walk, walk. Walking is one of the best things you can possibly do for your body. It's easy to do. It's easy to walk and you can do it anywhere. I'm not saying that you have to go for three mile, four mile walk. You don't have to be walking for an hour a day. If you can get 15 minutes in in the morning, 15 minutes in on your lunch break, that's great. Even things that seem so, so small, like parking far away from the front door, taking the stairs in your workplace. You know, you hear these things like, oh, take the stairs, not the elevator. Yes, <laughs> like these things do add up. Set a step goal for yourself and try to reach that. Now you hear this 10,000 steps thrown out there everywhere. Like I wanna hit 10,000 steps a day which is phenomenal, but if you've only been getting in 2,000 steps, 3,000 steps, do not set your goal for 10,000. So many people set themselves up for failure. They go from like, I haven't worked out in a week to I'm gonna start working out five days a week. You have to slowly increase these things. You're still gonna see results. There's gonna be results regardless. The moment you start making those changes, there's gonna be results. But the more you try to go from zero to 100, you're just gonna fall off. We want to make this a lifestyle thing, right? You hear all these fitness people, I made it my lifestyle. Going to the gym five days a week wasn't part of your life. It's not gonna be a part of your life like immediately. We're trying to build those habits. Have a step goal, right? So say my step, my step goal is 8,500. I will get up and walk around my apartment. <laughs> Just get up and move my body. But if you can pull up a walking pad, that's even better. If you can get a walking pad, I love my walking pad. It's, it's back there in the corner. All right, on top of setting realistic goals, you need to find a schedule or a routine that works for you. There is no, what's the best routine? What's the best weekly split? What's the best? The best routine is the one that you're gonna be consistent with. So if you feel like you can go to the gym only two, maybe three times a week, go to the gym two, three times a week. You just wanna walk, do that. If you wanna just go to yoga or just go to Pilates, do that. If you have a super demanding job or if you have children, it's gonna be difficult. You're not gonna just like, oh, I'm going to the gym five, six days a week. You don't even need to go that many times anyway. <laughs> One, you can lose weight without going to the gym in the first place because it's all about your diet, but diet plus gym together is like where the magic happens. Figure out a routine that's going to work best for you. There is no perfect routine. There is no perfect weekly split. Um, there is a lot of information out there. Obviously, I give you guys a lot of information. So if you want to follow, you can absolutely do that. But go and shop, like go and shop around. There's so many fitness influencers out there and you can find people who you're like, oh, I can do this. If you don't wanna to go to the gym at all, but you feel like you can get in a couple 30 minute sessions at home, there are so many influencers who only provide home workouts. Like there's information everywhere. So you need to figure out what it is that I can do and stick to that. Going along with that, you need to find some structure. Find some structure. 
know what it is that you're gonna do so you don't have to worry about it. I've mentioned this in my workouts. I use an app called Heavy. My workouts are already plugged in there. So when I go to the gym, I already know I'm gonna walk on the treadmill and then this is what my workout is gonna look like. And then it just helps. So you're not there lost and you're not there wandering around and you you know this is what I'm this is what I'm showing up to do. Just do something. Something is better than nothing. I promise you, something is better than nothing. Fifth tip, sleep. Sleep, 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 sleep. Sleep is so important. Just your overall health. You need a rest. <laughs> you need a rest. You need to set hard deadlines for yourself when it comes to your sleep. I know it's very easy to like, be in bed and you're, you're like scrolling on TikTok and then you're scrolling on YouTube or whatever and then next thing you know, hours have passed. You have to set a heart limit. Hey, I wanna be in bed by this time and I wanna be asleep by this time and stick to it. Because if you're not getting proper sleep, you're not like resting properly, you're more likely not gonna get the stuff that you need done. You know, the days that I have poor sleep, I'm waking up, I'm not going to the gym. I don't feel like cooking. I'm probably gonna eat something that wasn't part of my plan. Um, my workout's gonna be trash if I even get my workout in at all. But when I feel like I'm asleep and when I feel like I'm rested, that's when everything just kind of clicks in place. You got to figure out the schedule that works best for you, um, depending on your lifestyle, your job, your family, everything. At least try to get seven hours. I know it's easier said than done for some, um, but a lot of you can. A lot of you can. Put down the phone. Take your butt to bed. Go to bed. What am I gonna title this? I think I'm gonna title it like how to lose 20 pounds, but that's more so for the algorithm. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I will put the TDE website down below. I'll also put the heavy app that I use um, to track my workouts down below. I also put like my food scale because I use my fitness pal. Um, I'll link that down below too, where I just go and enter in my calories. Don't follow the calories that my fitness pal gives you. Don't do it. Go to the TDE TDEE website, figure out your calories, and then put it in my fitness pal, and then you can track that. In a couple weeks, I will be giving you guys a physique update. If, if you are not new here, um, the first couple weeks for me are always like slow when it comes to losing weight, and then bam, things just start happening. I'm at that point where like, oh, okay, I see it. Things are coming off, things are making changes, and so yeah, I'll give you guys an update at the end of April and um, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys later.